Welcome back to our video series about how unique Q-trap scan functions can improve your residue testing workflows. In the last video, we showed an example of how second-generation MRM, or MRM cubed, can improve both selectivity and signal-to-noise for detection of low-level residues, particularly when the MRM peak suffers from large background interferences. So, how can you identify second-generation product ions for your compounds that have MRM transitions with background interferences, or find unique transitions for your compounds using a Q-trap system? This video will highlight the mechanics of MRM cubed and how you can incorporate this workflow into your own methods. A little on the mechanics. In a standard MRM scan, the precursor ion is selected in Q1, fragmented in Q2, and fragment ions are transferred through Q3 and detected. The difference between a Q-trap system and a triple quad MSMS system is that Q3 has some additional capabilities. The process of collecting MRM cube transitions is similar to an MRM scan in the beginning. The precursor ion is selected and fragmented in Q2. However, with a Q-trap system, the product ions are collected in the Q3 linear ion trap, or LIT. One specific product ion of interest is isolated and the other ions are destabilized and exit LIT. An excitation energy is then applied to the isolated product ion and fragmentation occurs through collisionally induced dissociation. The result is fragments of the product ion that are then scanned out and detected. There are two ways in analyst software that you can find the optimal MRM cube transitions for your stubborn compounds, through manual tuning or through the automated MRM cube optimization script. To get a step-by-step -step guide through the menu and automated approaches to acquiring MRM cube transitions for your compounds, visit our e-learning portal at www.absciex.com slash e-learning. Once you enroll, you will see our catalog of courses. Select the MRM cube application for quantitation course. This course will guide you through all of the parameters for finding and optimizing the MRM cube transitions for your compounds using either the menu or automated approaches. When following this process for our compound melathion, our MRM cube optimization showed two second generation product ions created from our most intense product ion, ions 71 and 81. We now have unique MRM cube transitions, which are highly selective to our compound of interest and can be monitored just like our MRMs can be monitored during our acquisition experiment. The resulting data from this method produced a chromatogram with improved signal to noise and reduced background interferences. Additionally, you can use your MRM cube peaks to perform quantitation just as you would when using MRM peaks. As you can see by this example, MRM cubed is a great way to improve selectivity to remove matrix or background interferences that might affect your MRM peak. Our next two videos in this series will show you how you can easily upgrade an MRM acquisition method to an MRM cubed acquisition method for your compound of interest. And we'll show you how you can use your MRM cube peaks for routine quantitation of your compound.